guys, it's Len from the Halfway Homestead, and I, I know it's been a while since we've uploaded to YouTube. We are hoping to, uh, not hoping, we're going to change that. Um, it's been quite a, uh, just a, a rocky road for the last two years. And you're going to hear more about that if you're interested, uh, and if not, we're going to post it up anyway because it's what we're going to do. We're going to tell our story. Um, but it's been about a year and a half, two years since we've been any consistent work on YouTube and on our website. Um, and so... We're going to get back at it. Today's just step one. I was going to go ahead and uh, work on some DIY chicken feeders. Uh, we've got about 250 chickens out right now on pasture, and they uh, our existing feeding system system's just not enough. So what we're going to do is you've probably seen these. Um, I've, I, I got this idea from some some other forum or or you know backyard chickens or something like that. I don't quite recall where I saw it. I saw it years ago. Um, and I thought I had it memorized, and I went to the store and I picked up some parts, and well, things didn't work out the way I wanted. So then I went and read somebody's blog, and I did what they said, and that didn't really work out. Um, matter of fact, I can show you what happened. The end result here was, let's see if you can see that, big fat crack in this thing as I tried to get this thing um, big enough to accept these um, these are four inch PVC what's called a street elbow uh, they run a couple bucks at your local hardware store but essentially the end result will look something like like so look down inside all the feeders are there you gravity feed in and the chickens can take and put their heads right inside and eat Without the, without the feed itself getting wet. So what didn't I like about the other processes I tried? Um, first off, I saw some that said to take your bucket, I'll scoop back a little bit here so you can see, take your bucket and kind of trace around your circle and then use a razor blade to circle that out, kind of score it a little bit and then punch through. Um, that didn't work so well. Either I don't know how to use a razor blade or the process just isn't very consistent. It took a lot of effort. So then I thought, hole saw, right? I got hole saws. So it's my hole saw collection and of course, I don't have the right size hole saw. So I went down to the local hardware store, come to find out this is considered a four inch PVC street elbow. Uh, it's a 45 degree, in case that is a difference for you or what have you. My understanding is that a street elbow is 45 degrees. But just in case, I'm wrong. I'm not a plumber. Um, so this thing is considered a, uh, a three inch. Excuse me, I'm misspeaking. Three inch. But the inside or the outside di diameter is larger. So three inch ain't going to cut it. So you need yourself a three and a half inch hole saw, which lines up perfectly. And how well you can see that there. It is just right. Old Goldilocks. So what I then I the, the couple of them were saying, oh, just make some trace it. But they don't say where to trace it. Like if you look at these inside this bucket, they go at a downward angle. Oh, there goes slamming the door. They go at a downward angle. So when you put them in, they gotta be able to go down in that 45 degrees. Well, there's a bottom to the bucket. So if you don't go high enough, well then now you 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 know you can't get them all the way in there. And if you go too high, chickens can't reach the feed in the bottom. That feed will never leave. And then you end up with stagnant feed on the bottom. So what I came up with is through trial and error, I figured out roughly what it should be. Um, now, I should say that I measured this, but I didn't because I just do things. Instead, I got a stick. So this is my process. Hopefully you'll like it. I found it to be very easy and once it's set up, you can replicate it very, very, very quickly. So take your bucket, set it flat down. You'll notice on any five gallon bucket that I've ever seen, you've got one and two little notches. Those are exactly even at the center of the bucket. So we can start there, right? So take our little stick, we come across our little bucket, 
We put it right on those notches. I guess technically you don't really need to do that. And we're just going to put a mark directly on the side, and I'll show this to you in just a second, of that. But then we're going to take and turn it 45 degrees, sorry, 90 degrees, and we're going to split the difference. So now we're looking at like the face of a clock. We're looking at noon, 3, 6, and 9. So now you see my little black marks on every quarter, okay? Simple, simple. Then, well, how high do I have to go? I took my same little handy stick and I got myself a mark. That mark, come to find out, if I take this, this and put it straight up against this lip and I put that mark, I put another mark, now I have the exact height I need. And for you guys, I'll measure it real quick. So let me grab a tape measure. where I have one closer, but things are never where you need them. Probably my fault, not putting it back, right? So if we look at it, we put our mark up, it is seven inches. Seven inches from the bottom of this lip right here, make a mark. If you do that with the stick, it becomes very, very quick to replicate. So we just line up with our black mark down here. Let me scoot back here. Black mark down here at the bottom. Put our stick. We're not building kitchen cabinets here, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Put a dot. Flipper, not the dolphin. Put a dot. Flip again. Put a dot. And last time, put a dot. I'm guessing you guys know what's coming next. We have our dots, put your drill bit, you never use the hole saw, give you this handy dandy little drill bit right there in the center, you're going to put that on the center. Now, a hole saw is also known as a wrist breaker, because when these teeth grab, it's going to try to jerk the, the drill around. It can happen. The best way to do that is to put slight pressure down until these teeth start to score, and then you can go all the way through. I'm not saying I won't have it break my wrist. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. So we'll scoot back here so you guys can see. I think you can. And I'm just holding it between my legs. Take and look closely, make sure that I'm as close to my dot. Again, not kitchen cabinets. Done. All right, so you're gonna replicate that three more times, but in the interest of you guys being able to see what's going on here, now you've got your PVC, your street elbow, it fits right in. Beautiful. Now you'll notice, see how well the camera shows this. Come on, work with me. You got these little, like, there we go. These little outer growths. I don't know what they are. They're part of the manufacturing process. Those will fit inside of here. You gotta work it pretty slow, you know, kind of gentle, but they will go in. And then once they're in, they're on, oh, once they're in, they're on the other side. Now, I haven't found a good solution for this right here, and if anybody out there has got a good idea, I'd love to hear it, because ideally, I'd like to have this flush up against the bucket. But this, this thing is in the way. Now, could I saw it off? Sure, could I sand it off? Sure. Do I wanna do all that? Not really, I'm lazy, right? So I wanna do the least amount of work for the most amount of, most amount of benefit. So for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. But if any of you guys have any brilliant ideas of an easy way to get this over, I mean, I could notch the bucket, but if you've ever dealt with these buckets, they can be kind of fragile and brittle. So I'm going to leave it for now, and then we're going to silicone caulk these. And that's all there is to it. Give it a good washout, and the door's going to slam again. It's a windy day here. Let me fix that door. All right, no more wind. Well, at least no more slamming doors. Um, so in just a matter of minutes, you can have all four of them in. We're just gonna put a bead of outdoor silicone caulk, right? Something like this guy here, uh, window door siding and trim. Uh, not sponsored by anybody. If you wanna send me some money, I'd love to have it. Uh, and from then, just let, let that silicone seal up. 
feed, uh, drop, drop it full of feed, put some, put some lids on it. Um, now, this is kind of low to the ground, right? So if we set this, let's see how well this is going to show. So assume that this is the ground, this bucket, this box is the ground, those chickens would have to have their heads pretty low to get in there. So I'm thinking that I'm going to put this up on a cinder block, maybe two, and get it up off the ground about yay high so that they don't have to bend down to get in. To get in there, they can look more in and come, come around. Um, but this is a quick emergency fix. It's really inexpensive. I think this whole unit will probably cost me 15 bucks. Um, and I think this is going to solve our immediate problem right now is that we've got birds fighting over feeders. We've got six feeders out right now. Um, we weren't sure if it'd be enough. We knew it would not be enough for when they're full grown, but we thought we could get away with a couple of weeks that way. Um, turns out they are not having it. So we don't want any birds to get pushed out of the way and not get feed. So we're going to throw together like five of these things, put them out on cinder blocks, and then we'll move them twice a day like we move our, mo our mobile uh, chicken feeder. So there'll probably be a video about that. I've got one up on our Facebook um, as well. So thanks for hanging out. If you have any questions or improvement ideas, I'd love to hear it. But again, remember, just get yourself a little stick. You can call it a jig, which is what most people do. You're looking at seven inches from the inside lip of your bucket down, and that'll get you right where you want to go if you're using a three and a half in, or three inch PVC, uh, 90, 45 degree street elbow. So uh, love to hear from you guys. Give it a like, share. You know the drill. We're just a couple of folks trying to live on a homestead, and you know every little bit of support helps. Um, there's not a lot going on here these days in terms of like uh, you know the way the economy and stuff's going. So even if just just a simple like or a share would be a huge, huge blessing to us. Thank you. God bless.